In this video, we're going to talk about Ionic 3. Now, if you've been following uh, the Ionic news recently, you may have seen mention uh, somewhere to uh, Ionic 3. And of course, a lot of people are going to wonder uh, what that means. Why is there an Ionic, Ionic 3 when Ionic 2 was only just released? Uh, if you were around for the uh, Ionic 2 release, if you originally used Ionic 1, you know that that was a huge jump from Ionic 1 to Ionic 2. There's a lot of changes and it was essentially just an entirely new framework. Uh, Ionic 2 is certainly a lot better, a lot more powerful than Ionic 1, uh, but it was a, a huge step for people to make that transition from Ionic 1 to Ionic 2. So naturally when talk of Ionic 3 starts coming out uh, sort of soon after the you know official release of Ionic 2 came out, people naturally uh, are worried about that and they're like, well, what does this mean? Uh, I've seen comments like, does this mean that, you know, Ionic 2 failed and now we're moving on to Ionic 3 already? They're not, you know, bothering to update Ionic 2 anymore. And that's not the case at all. Uh, it's just a matter, I guess, of the terminology that's being used here. And there's a different versioning system being used now as opposed to with uh, the original version of Ionic. So the transition from Ionic 2 to Ionic 3 will be nothing like the transition from Ionic 1 to Ionic 2. Uh, the transition from Ionic 2 to Ionic 3 will be more like just a transition between I guess, a more normal update, say in Ionic 1, it'll be more like a 1.3 to 1.4 sort of upgrade rather than you know transitioning to this new framework. Uh, the reason there's been this change is that uh, Ionic, like Angular, uh, is now using something called semantic versioning or semver for their versioning. And it doesn't really, I guess, mean a whole lot in terms of what, you know, functionality is going to be made available. It's just a more consistent way for people to version their um, software libraries. So I guess versioning is kind of this, you know, sort of undefined thing. Uh, people in the past, I guess, have sort of gone with whatever felt right for their company, how they wanted to name their updates, whether they call that you know, 1.10.2 or they go to 1.11 or, you know, 1.50. Uh, Semver is just a more um, standardized way to uh, do versioning and all it is basically is you have your three sort of points, uh, three dots. So you have something like 1.1.0 1 or 2.3.5 and the first number stands for a, a major change, the second number is a minor change and the third is just like a patch. So when we see uh, sort of little updates to Ionic, just like little bug fixes and stuff like that, that'll come through as a patch. Uh, so in, uh, I guess, version 2, you might expect to see something like 2.3.0, and then if they were to apply a patch, you'd get 2.3.1. Or if there was some kind of minor update that's bigger than a patch, uh, but it's not really that big of an update, uh, you'd see a transition to something like 2.4 rather than 2.3. And then when there's a bigger sort of update, uh, that's when you get that you know, first number changing to something like Ionic 3. So we'd move to 3.0, 3.1, and so on. So this update, uh, so right now it's Ionic is at version 2.3 right now. And this, uh, this upgrade, the Ionic 3 update, will probably come sometime in the next few weeks. So that's when we transition from, say, 2.3 to 3.0. Uh, because this is going to be a major update, but it's not a new framework. It's not a totally um, different thing that we're going to be working with. But with a sort of major update like that, that may imply there will be some kind of breaking changes. Maybe some APIs will be changed. Um, whereas with a smaller update, with a patch or a minor update, uh, you're likely not going to have any kind of breaking changes. Uh, having said that, though, there really isn't many breaking changes in Ionic 3. Uh, there are sort of huge updates behind the scenes, things to make uh, Ionic work faster and for the package sizes to be smaller. Uh, but in terms of things you'll need to do to update your applications, it's actually pretty small. And so I've got the upgrade uh, guide up on the screen here. And this will probably change uh, somewhat over the next uh, couple of weeks, perhaps, because this isn't finalized. Uh, but when it is released, you know, you'll have some update notes like this. And as of right now, all you need to do to update an existing application is to just change the dependencies to what you see on the screen here. 
And you can do this now if you want. The, the beta for Ionic 3 is out, so if you want to give it a shot now, uh, you can. Uh, of course, it's not stable yet, though. Uh, so you need to update to those dependencies, uh, import the browser module here into your app.module.ts file, same with the HTTP module, and you can also make use of Ionic Native uh, 3.x. Uh, so that's all you need to do to update an existing Ionic 2 application to Ionic 3. And if you're generating a new Ionic 3 application, or just a new Ionic application, uh, this will all be done for you anyway. So uh, you can just keep going about doing things the way that you have been. And I guess that's another important note there that I guess the branding for the framework as Angular have done is that they want it to be called just Ionic. It's not Ionic 1, Ionic 2, Ionic 3. It's just Ionic and then the version numbers don't really matter so much. Um, Ionic 3 will soon enough transition to Ionic you know, 4, then 5, then 6. And again, it's not going to be you know, a new framework every time. It's just going to be major updates like this one. Of course, it's not so easy, I guess, to just change it to just Ionic because people are so used to uh, searching for Ionic 2 now. A lot of content out there is labeled as Ionic 2 and makes it easier to search for, you know, Ionic 2 content compared to Ionic 1. Uh, so there's a bit of a, I guess, teething process there, but uh, just, yeah, keep in mind that uh, this version number doesn't matter uh, so much anymore. So I'm not going to spend much time talking about, you know, what's going to be new in Ionic 3. I mainly just want to get this point across uh, that, you know, it's not this totally different framework when compared to Ionic 2. Uh, but I will just go through this document quickly. Um, one of the big changes in Ionic 3 is the option to lazy load modules. And I probably will uh, do this, um, I guess do a more in-depth blog post perhaps on this uh, when the uh, when Ionic 3 is stable, when it's released. Uh, but essentially what you'll be able to do now is, or lazy load pages rather, uh, we can create modules for each page and we can lazy load those. So what that means, uh, lazy loading in general means to you know, load something when you need it, not right away. Uh, so we often do that with images on a web page rather than loading all the images right away. Say if we've got 100 images on a page, instead we load those images as the user is about to you know, scroll to them. So if they never scroll to the bottom of the page, we don't need to load the image down there. And so it's the same idea with lazy loading pages in Ionic. Rather than loading everything uh, up front, uh, we can just load what we need uh, first and then load in what we need as we go. Uh, so that's going to do a lot to help you know, with the startup time of your applications. If you've got you know, a particularly big application that's loading lots of things, uh, that's going to help uh, with getting your application to start up faster. And finally, the only um, breaking changes, uh, so far at least, with Ionic 3 is there's some minor changes to the grid um, where they've removed the, I guess, the old style of uh, the grid system where you would use uh, width and a number to specify columns. Um, now you should use the, the newer uh, version, which is essentially the same thing. You just use col instead of width. Uh, and there's some changes to typography here, some changes to slides, but uh, these are all pretty minor changes, um, uh, which will be quite easy to update in any existing application anyway. And of course, the big thing with Ionic 3 is that it will now be using uh, Angular 4 behind the scenes. So that's the latest version, at least right now, of Angular. Uh, so you're going to get all the advantages of what Angular 4 offers in terms of performance and new features and so on. Uh, and that's going to be built right into your Ionic applications uh, when you're using Ionic 3. So I hope this video was you know, able to clear up uh, some misconceptions about what Ionic 3 is. Uh, I can understand that people would be worried when they see something like this come out when they've just spent you know, all this time investing into learning what Ionic 2 is. And it seems like, you know, I know there's this new framework coming out now and we're just gonna have to forget everything we learn again that's not the case so yeah if you see people on the forums or wherever confused about this let them know maybe you can point them to this video uh, hopefully now you can be excited about the launch of ionic 3 rather than uh, worried about it okay so i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one